Hello, back again to do another unboxing and review. Today we're going to look at another standalone smartwatch. This one from Colmi, and this is the model i2. Now, um, before we go any further, a uh, quick why I'm doing yet another smartwatch is because the previous one I reviewed, um, that was an unbranded um, smartwatch, had some pretty good hardware, but some design uh, choices and a lack of, I guess, features that you would kind of need in a wristwatch. Um, weren't there. So it left me wanting and hence here we are with yet another smartwatch. Now this one's coming to us from Colmi, a company that, it, I mean it is brand name, Colmi, um, although not perhaps not many in this market have heard of them. However, I've had an experience with some of their other um, devices, just regular digital wristwatches, and they've held up quite well and they were a great deal for what I paid. So I'm going to see if that can extend into their smartwatch line. All right, so here are some specs that I'll put up so you guys can look at while I read them off. Okay, so Cole Me i2 smartwatch. It runs on Android 5.1. It has 2 gigs of RAM, 16, gra 16 gigs of ROM, a 2 megapixel camera, has Wi Fi. 3 and 2G, so if you're 3G you're using WCDMA and those frequencies that you see listed there and if not you're using 2G and that's the GSM quad band. Alright, it has GPS, it has a heart rate monitor, it runs Bluetooth 4.0, it has a MediaTek 6580 as its processor and uh, in case you don't know, 65 designates that it's the 32 um, architecture as opposed to 64. Okay, it's a 400 by 400 pixel resolution on the screen, which happens to be 1.39 inches, and it has a 400 milliamp hour battery, and it's life waterproof. Now, that last one, life waterproof, what does that really mean? Um, according to the manufacturer, it means you can use it for everyday life activities, such as, you know, washing your hands or being out in the rain. However, you're not supposed to go swimming with it or diving with the watch. Okay, so with that said, let's go ahead and look over, um, do around the box. It comes in yet another box, almost identical to the one from the unbranded, but of course this one is a branded, but it's the same type of box. This, uh, yep, almost a cube um, black box with the slide off top and nothing else to look at. So with that being done, let's go ahead and do the unboxing. So pulling off the lid, by the way there were no stickers, no seals, no shrink wrap, this is how it came. So to open it, obviously just pull off the lid. Okay, so the top of the box has some padding in there. Uh, we This dropped out first, this is a call me. Okay, this is your warranty card, and it's telling you to leave good feedback. And there's a little thank you letter. So um, right up front here we have the actual device. And then there seems to be, I'll take this off, put this on the side for just a sec. It is, was in that little slot there, which is foam, to hold it steel. Okay, so we'll see what's in this little side box here. I'll make sure there's nothing underneath the foam. Nope, nothing under the foam. Okay, so the rest of the contents are in this little side box, which comes out. That's, by the way, a good reason to take out that foam so you can slide this out because the opening's up here. And what do we have? Okay. Okay, looks like it's a little gift. We'll look at the little gift first since it's red and it's kind of... Oh, all right. There it is. Oh. I see. It's one of those. Okay, I assume you can hang this from your rear view mirror. <laughs> uh, it's like a charm or something. Um, okay, that's cool. I like that. Um, all right, next we have a little screwdriver, which um, I'm assuming is to open it up to put in your SIM card, and that's a good sign. Usually means that there's some water protection when you have one of those that you need to get into the device. Okay, um, we have our instruction manual which um, as you can see it has Chinese written uh, writing on it so this side's the Chinese side and I assume this is English that it is okay so right now I don't even know if this is coming up on camera but they have two mini 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 screws you see them in there so uh, yeah 
those would be quite easy to lose. So I'll take care not to lose them. Keep them in their bag for right now. Okay, then here is the proprietary charger. And as you could probably see, it has the pins, um, pins to plate form of connection. And then on either side, you'll see these silver circles. I'm sure those are magnets. In fact, we could test that. <laughs> yeah, they are magnetic. So it, the magnets hold it to the device, in this case the watch, while the pins make contact with the plate, and therefore you get your charging and your data transmission. So you will need this. You can't just use a regular micro USB, so make sure you don't lose this. Now, that being the case, I went ahead and actually ordered an extra one, and here it is. Um, so if you don't purchase the extra one, you would only get one of these in the box. All right, so, uh, okay, now let's get back to the watch. So here we are, call me, there are those pins, those talk, plates I was talking about. We can see where you, what you open up with a screwdriver. That in the back there is the heart rate monitor sensor, so it's optical. Shines light into your forearm. <laughs> and, all right, there's our camera. Looks like we have a physical button there. Watch face, which is coming with a, um, it looks like it has a screen protector already applied. And on this side, uh, I see some holes, so I'm assuming those are a speaker on the band. It's a, a silicone, and uh, it's, I would say, medium. Not real grippy, not real slippy, somewhere in between. Okay, the clasp is in fact metal. Let me test that with our magnet, right? Okay, so it's some kind of metal. It's not magnetic metal, but that doesn't mean it's not metal, so. All right, and it's a, a one pin clasp. And we do have two of these slider bands to hold the excess strap that you put through. All right, now let's talk about the weight. Um, yeah, it's pretty much exactly what you'd think weight-wise by just looking at it. Um, yeah, so it's medium weight, but okay, so um, of course, first things first, I'm going to have to go charge this up. I'll probably take the time and read the manual a little bit, and I'll be back. All right, so I've had the chance to go ahead and charge up the watch. Also, I did the initial setup and installed the SIM card and all that good stuff. Now, um, let's talk about materials. Um, I believe I forgot to mention this earlier, but the part I'm touching here, the side, the basal, the part that goes around the watch, that, or the body, that is metal. Um, on the back here, this here's plastic where I'm touching. This little cold me door, I believe that's metal. I think it made a ting noise when I put it on the table. Um, anyway, right, so now let's go ahead and talk about the SIM card. The SIM card that this uses size-wise is the Nano SIM, so the smallest SIM card that is out right now, at least I'm pretty sure it is. It's the one that's almost all um, chip on the back, hardly any plastic around the chip. All right, now um, what it looks like in here, I'll just show a pic I took. Okay, so um, now with the SIM installed, I went ahead and powered it up. But before we get to that, let's talk about opening this door. Um, using the supplied screwdriver here was proving that uh, it wasn't going very well. Uh, the reason I say that is I'm not sure if they just really over torqued these screws or what the case was, but I was really pushing and turning on this and the screw wasn't turning at all and for fear of stripping the screw's head, making it very hard to take off later, I decided to abandon using this and use my own micro screwdriver. Something to keep in mind. Okay, so um, now we're talking about charging. It went ahead, it shipped with 60% charge. I brought it up to 100 and then left it on the charger for a while for that long initial first charging. All right, so with all that, let's go ahead and power the device here. So of course I've already done the initial setup and um, so we have the time and all that good stuff. Now, this um, watch has quite a few choices on watch face. Um, to change it, you just, well, you saw on the, whatever watch face it was currently on, 
um, you push and hold and then this menu comes up and from there you can slide side swipe side to side and select quite a variety of watch faces I mean I'm just gonna scroll through them quite quick here but you'll see that there are quite a many choices and of course a good number of them are the analog style to work well with the round um, dial okay and then there's a plus sign I'm not sure if you can add more or whatever but even if you don't there are quite a few of them alright so let's back out of that okay so um, whatever watch face you choose that will be essentially your home screen and the way the layout of this thing works is it's kinda like a cross you can go up and down left and right alright and then once you do that there are sometimes sub menus so you can do left or right or up and down within that menu so we have menus and top menus basically so let's go ahead and do um, we'll swipe uh, this direction so basically going left and um, screen wise and you can see I have no notifications of course if you had an email or text or whatever that would appear there alright so now let's go the other direction which is up screen up swipe down however you want to call it alright so here is your um, essentially status uh, screen I believe they call it and you can see that I have a, a full signal almost full signal but I'm currently on 2G and you can see that my carrier T-Mobile is being displayed there now I'm not sure if getting 3G with T-Mobile is possible but for right now it's 2G I made a phone call it worked so alright now, um, you can also see that you have your battery percentage, which I believe is represented by this bar, this circle um, that's going around the watch dial there. And all right, now, going over, also there's that little symbol, I think it says I'm not connected Bluetooth to a phone at the time, which I'm not. And all right, but so from this, you can see that perhaps there's three little dots down there. Those little three dots mean that there's, th uh, well, three menus in this area, all right? Of going up so we're gonna go slide over okay well because I did nothing it went off but we can get back there okay and then okay so we're gonna go over see the dots on the bottom we'll go over one now here are your shortcut buttons or hot keys or whatever you want to call them so much as like Wi-Fi Bluetooth airplane mode yeah all that okay and if you go over one more here's the weather in my area okay so uh, now let's go back to now to get to the whole, um, main screen you can go ahead and reverse your steps like this to get there or you can just push the side button here the physical button and it will first it will turn off but then when you print it will go back to the home screen okay now uh, so we did the um, up now let's go down all right swipe up whatever okay so here you have two buttons you have that blue one that says voice by pushing that the watch will enable voice control if you push this little sneaker it takes you into this kind of sport sport mode down here and you can tell that you're running or walking or what not also by pushing you have other calories that you burned there and then over here um, pushing the heart um, puts you to the heart monitor we'll do that a bit later but you can get to it from that all right, so we're going to go back here. And again, if you want to go back, I just in sport mode, I notice it seems like you can't reverse your steps by just swiping the opposite direction. So I just push this button here. Boom, I get back to where I want to be. Now, um, we did up, down. Okay, let's go this way. Here are all your icons, which are should be very familiar. You know, your phone, blah, blah, your file explorer, camera gallery. Yeah, so okay um, I did try the Bluetooth the Bluetooth works and um, so that's kind of important with a watch especially if you're using a headset um, so yeah all right now let's talk about um, yeah let's go here I'm gonna go to settings and um, show you sound okay so here I'm in settings sound um, another reason I did that is I was going to show you these uh, ringtones because there are quite a few ringtones. I got down to the P's before I selected one I liked, but just to give you an idea of you know the sound quality, let's just do um, I don't know. I'll just pick one randomly. Of course, the speakers on the side here. Okay, that one's kind of uh, all right. Let's try something else.
All right, so you can see they kind of have a wide variety of them, um, which is good. Some of these devices, they come with like, you know, six ringtones. This one has quite a bit more. So, all right. So I'll just cancel out of that. All right, so that pretty much covers the user interface. Um, next, we'll go ahead and take it out and do some uh, real world tests on it. Alright, so I've had the chance now to use this for over a week, and um, I must say I'm very impressed with this performance so far. Okay, so let's go ahead and um, let's talk about the camera. Um, so what I'll do is I'll show you some photos I took. Alright, okay. so as you can see, we have a visit from our dinosaur pal once again. And you know what that means, it must be time to test out a video slash photo feature. And that's what we're going to be doing. Now this feature I found um, on the watch, I happened to find it by accident. And what it is, it's actually object tracking. So what we'll do is we'll pan away the camera that you're viewing through. I'm going to move that away from the scene. And now I'm going to go ahead and um, pull up the camera on the watch. Alright. Um, okay, there we are. So now to enable it, you touch on the screen what you want to lock onto, and you push and hold, and you'll see a green or a target reticle pops up. There it goes, and once it's locked on, it'll turn green. Now as I move, you can see it's staying locked onto, I guess in this case it's his head slash neck portion. Pretty cool, huh? Alright, so for this part of the video, I'm just going to go over what it's like to use this on a daily basis. Alright, so first, let's talk about the charging. Here is the cable, which we've already looked at before. And I just wanted to point out that um, you, when you first hold this, you're going to think, wow, this is really light. And you might lead to the, oh, is I wonder if it's cheap. And I don't think it's so much that it's cheap, but rather the way it's constructed. As you've noticed here, this is a ribbon type um, cable as opposed to your more normal so here's a micro SD I've pulled from one of my many gadgets but you know we're used to seeing this right it's a typical cable wire whatever and you can see it's all the way around it's um, the same diameter as we're here you can see this is more of a ribbon so in comparison if I can hold these up correctly there we go you can see thin versus normal um, so yeah now as far as connecting um, well, we know where we connected here on the back. Now, if you notice, this is symmetrical, right? A magnet on either side and the four pins in the middle. So I'm not sure if it matters what way you connect it, um, but I've been just going like, you see it here, I have, so I can read Colmy um, right across, and I've been attaching this with the wire down, so like that. Um, so I'm not sure you might be able to do it this way, but since this has been working, I'm just gonna stick with that. All right, now let's go ahead and talk about how it is to wear. Um, actually, this watch is surprisingly comfortable. Um, compared to my other ones, this here, I'm putting it on right now. Okay, so you can see here, it fits real nice. The band is really smooth, so it doesn't dig into your wrist. And also, um, if you notice, although this is a rel you know, it's a decent sized dial, it doesn't get in the way when you flex back, or at least my wrist, when I flex back like that, it doesn't jam um, the button and turn it on. That's what I'm trying to demonstrate. Some of these with the button stick out so far, if you do this, it just turns it on and off because you're pushing the button. That doesn't happen here. And I think that might be one of the smart um, design. If you can see where the button is placed, it's placed up and over here as opposed to where the camera is. So I think that avoids having the accidental turn on issue. Also, the watch's profile, although it's not the thinnest ever, it sits on your wrist well without sticking up so far that it jams up on like shirts and coats and all that. Sometimes that isn't so much the case here. I don't know if I'd want to go much bigger than this, but I also don't think I'd want to go thinner and lose any of the hardware that this has. So I think in the, this is a good compromise. All right. All right, so now let's talk about the screen. Uh, first of all, I'd like to say the screen is really sharp. Um, that's appreciated. Also, the brightness. Here I have the brightness set to 
on the higher side, but not maxed, and it's plenty enough to view even during the daytime. So, all right, that's good. Next, let's talk about making a phone call. And the reason I point this out is because on my previous watch that um, I did a review on, I, M5, it, if you wanted to make a phone call, you, you would pull up the person's name and contact list or whatever, and they'd be displayed, right? I don't know, brother or whatever. Um, and then what happens is, if you wanted to go ahead and um, um, dial that person, you had to push this little icon that was like on the far right of their name. So if you know you want to quickly pull up your wrist to make a call, you had to kind of do this like pinky sharpshooting thing where like, Ugh, I gotta push that little button. Ugh. And it was just, why can't I just push the person's name? You see, this watch obviously allows you to do just that. You push anywhere on the name, boom, it makes it dials the number. And there is a little icon on the far right, but that's for texting. And I assume if you're in a situation where you can actually have the time to write a text, you probably have the time enough to you know look for and you know be a little more accurate with your pushes. But the idea of just be able to tap the name and have the phone call go through, that's yeah, it seems like a no-brainer. But for whatever reason, that previous watch couldn't figure that one out. So. All right, so I've gone ahead and just looked up uh, snakes here just um, to demonstrate what it's like to use this to, you know, surf the web or whatever. And um, now what I'm going to demonstrate here is how the watch makes up or compensates for you, what you see is going on right here in this bottom corner. And that is the fact that it cuts out part of the screen because, um, well, most screens aren't circles like this one we have here for a watch. But they figured out a way of making that not an issue and to do this you go ahead and you push this uh, the physical button up here, you push and hold and then this screen comes up and this is where you can turn it off and all that other stuff but you see this top um, button up here is to change the way the format of the screen and I went from full, is what we were seeing before using the whole dial, the whole circle and now it puts it to a more, well we'll go back and I'll show you how the difference you see, so now it's displaying it, and you lose a little of the real estate as far as displaying an image because, well, it cuts it down to be a, a rectangle, but that allows you to view it more traditionally, and you don't lose anything to the edges. And, yeah, so, pretty cool. All right, so in summary, Colmy has given us um, a smart watch. That it functions like a watch. It looks like a watch. It's quite stylish. Um, in a kind of classic way and also it's nice and comfortable. Um, it can wear it for extended periods of time, no discomfort. Uh, on top of that, the performance for everything you need to do from making phone calls to surfing the web to taking pictures all works great. Uh, there really is no downside to this watch that I found. The only thing that you might point out is that it seems that at least with a T-Mobile SIM you can only get 2G. I, I wish it was 4G but um, 2G works. I've made phone calls. The person could hear me. I could hear them. So it works. Um, and unless you're an AT&T customer, um, the whole 2G thing should not be an issue. So I've been happy with it um, for this little over a week now of use. I've had no issues. And for the price, it's got quite a good deal. And um, it's always nice to have another brand um, in the mix. And Colmy, you know, you're doing pretty well.